What's going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I went to Texas this weekend, and I know we normally talk on my couch, but this time we're going to talk on one of my good friend's couches. Let's do it. <laughs> Every morning you have two choices. Continue to sleep with your dreams or wake up and chase them. On this channel, we're choosing to chase them. I'm connecting with some pretty cool dream chasers and getting all in their business. They say millennials always have something to say. I don't know. Let's talk about it. talk about egos first right let's, let's let's attack that so i think when it comes to being a man in general people associate a level of ego why i think that as a man you feel the desire to be on top naturally right so i feel like society women friends kind of at the end of the day rely on men usually to make the decision, decide what we're gonna do, hold the family down. So, you know, there's so much pressure to be on top so that it comes to the level of ego, a level of having to be on top. And I definitely agree. I, I don't know where this stigma came from where we gotta, you know, put in the fact that, you know, does it go back to Genesis? If we wanna get into religion here, like, does <laughs> right, it go right. back to Genesis? Like, seriously, like, where do we get this stigma of placing a man and a woman into a certain standard? So. A man takes care of a household, right? A woman takes care of the home as well, but you are in charge. So I feel like internally we get that ego, but mm -hmm. essentially, where exactly, where, where does it come from? No one can really answer that question. It's generational. I mean, because you it yeah. keeps passing down. I mean, do I think it changes a little bit? Like over time, like I don't feel like our egos are as, ma well, not, I shouldn't say masculine, are not as somewhat toxic as you can go back to like okay. three or four generations ago okay. when it was like, go fix my breakfast, like, right. iron my clothes, right. that type of thing. I don't think, I think it's switched over time. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely think it's, it's passed down through the generations. And Brian, you were talking about religion. Yeah. Like in religion, there's kind of like that hierarchy too, where it's, you know, it's God, yeah. it's man, it's the wife and the family. Yeah. And if you're tracing it back generationally, like that's, I know that's how, you know, I was kind of raised and my right. family was right. raised yeah. you know, based on that Christian principle. Exactly. Uh, and even, you know, I'm kind of nerdy and stuff like that. But outside of, <laughs> also, yeah. but outside of that, like if you're taking it back to like other animals, like mm. when you think about like mating and things like that, it's mm. always the male species for the most part. Right. That has yeah. to be the flashy one. That has to be the aggressive one. Uh, when you're looking at like other species and stuff like that too. So there's kind of a nurture piece mm -hmm. and a biological piece to it. And like common speech, mailman, spokesman, like you think about like, yeah, you know, man, like, like, yeah, yeah, you think about yeah. I also think that people don't really work to change it. I think we're comfortable with it now. Like even <laughs> like, like I was talking to them earlier, but I asked a question on Instagram about like, you know, men and stereotypes and like men cheat. Right? Yeah. And like, we are comfortable with the idea that men cheat, right? And it's like, well, men just cheat. Or like, men are just gonna be this, men are just gonna be that. And I feel like if we don't talk about like addressing it and kind of switching it up, it's gonna stay the same. It may not be as bad as four generations ago, like you said, but it's not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. Like, cause also my dad asked me, I was telling him too, like with men who uh, wanna be players so bad, that part of the ego. Like, why do you think that's, that's the case? I think a lot of times with men as well, opposed to women, women get, kind of like ostracized for having a whole bunch of sexual partners. Yeah. On the opposite side, men get glorified for having a bunch of sexual partners. Right? Exactly. And why is that? Is that the same case? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which one? Please. You're going to talk about it. I was right. I was right. I, was right. <laughs> I mean, I think it kind of ties in. I mean, you guys watched his last videos talking about vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we hide that in If you haven't seen that video, yeah, go, go, go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like it's a lot of vulnerability that the fact that a lot of men struggle potentially with internal, so they express themselves in that sense of we've got to show our manhood mm -hmm. by having mm -hmm. all these partners or being quote unquote the man, I've got to be strong, I've got to look good, I've got to be, like what does it mean to be, yeah. you know what I mean? What is a man? Let's define it. And you guys go first because I don't have an answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a level of of owning who you are, right? And I think that no matter what that person is, is what I know about being a man, right? If, if you are not the gym rat, if you are not the 
millionaire, moneymaker, whatever that case may be. Like, I think a man owns whatever he is and is comfortable in that. You don't put the desire to put on, the desire to like present bigger, the desire to, you know, what, have this ego we're talking about, right? I think that's what, to me, a man is. Be that's, is. that's being mature, right? And okay. I, think we're, I think we're getting to a place where, you know, society is completely different now than what it used to be. Okay. There were, the, the way that gender roles were back then, right. yeah. completely different now when we're having the conversation with equality and inclusion and things like that, mm -hmm. um, where I completely agree with what you said, but to that same sense, what does being a woman mean versus being a girl? Is there, is there a same. difference? Is it the same? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Is, is it more of a just, what does it mean to be mature? What does it mean to be grown? So are you saying like, that doesn't define what a man is? Or are you saying like, man and woman are synonymous? What, what, what are you saying? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> if you're blending the gender roles, then yeah, then cost it out. Yeah, it's, it's a level of maturity. maturity. Yeah. 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 I mean, anatomically, if you think about it, it's just that in a sense. A man and a woman, is just anatomical features are different and there's different mannerisms, hormones and things like that. So if you divide it down to that point yeah. and then you start factoring in the maturity side. So, so are, we, are we really different? So are we gonna go down as gender roles? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so are the times done where women cook, clean, do with the money? Is that done? Can we might, we might have some it? viewers that are kind of that, that are very traditional, but I honestly think that I think it is. It's, I think it's done. I, I, I think do. defining a gender yeah. by those types of activities, those roles, yeah. or those quote unquote stereotypes, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. I think those days are done. Okay. Especially yeah. like if you think about the the whole like all of the diversity and inclusion talk that we're hearing today right. when it comes to like gender roles, equality. Uh, now it's, you know, when you're, I work in a diversity and inclusion space, it's not even just man or woman, it's, you know, gender neutral, mm -hmm. it's, you know, yeah. it, it's, there's a whole lot of different categories and people that yeah. want to be represented. The pushback would be a man's ego. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the, yeah. I think what that would interview what you're saying is like, if I have a big ego, I can't, I'm not comfortable with the idea of, a woman wanting to be the provider because I should mm -hmm. make. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm not coming with her making yes. more money because yeah. I should make the most money, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But it goes back to well, where does that come from? But like even yeah. thinking, because it's pressure to be that. I think because to yeah, me, sure. I know women who I love all you women watching. <laughs> so no offense if this is offensive, but I know women who make a bunch of money but still want a man to make the money, still want a man to pay the bills, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. have her own and still will talk about. He better. And it's like yeah. you have you can afford you can, to. Do we can do so. so. Like, why is it a big thing? But I think exactly. women have not pushed past the the notion that a man is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think yeah. simultaneously, if a man's supposed to be, I think a lot of women feel like, well, as a woman, I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So then you adopt to what you're supposed to be, as does he. And whether he wants to cook or not, you're gonna cook. Whether he wants mm -hmm. to be the nurturing person or not, you're gonna be that. You know. No, I think a lot of pushback comes with communication as well. So we're, if we're it. if we're talking about relationships and going down that road, yeah, you know. Where does the point come in where the partners are communicating effectively to where, hey, these are my beliefs, you know, I, I want to communicate them effectively to you that, you know, I don't know, I definitely believe you make more money, but why am I in this position? Why are we role playing here, essentially? The beauty of our generation slash the like not so beautiful part of it is there's been a lot of generations before us, which means that there's a lot of advice before us. Mm -hmm. And advice can sometimes help you, but can sometimes hinder you. Yeah. yeah. Because it doesn't allow you to kind of figure it out on your own. And so this relationship books every two seconds, there's someone telling you how to be in a relationship, whether or not that, that applies to you. Right? Yeah. So there's, there's a way yeah. to even past relationships, because I don't want to stick to relationships. Like, mm -hmm. there's a way to be as a man. Yeah. There's a way to be as a black man. These all things are defined. Yeah, right? Exactly. There's a way to be as a Caucasian. Whatever, there's a way to be in yeah. society. And so I think when you know that way to be, and you deviate, right? And are we gonna talk about the person who deviates or are you just in your own little silo space over here while the other guys who have followed the narrative of, I'm gonna go to the gym five days a week, I'm gonna make the most money, I'm gonna objectify women, I'm gonna, you know, and then the guys who don't, let's talk about it, get sanctioned. Cause the guys who don't smash every girl they meet, get called names, come on, come on let's, let's be real, right? The guys who don't make a bunch of money are like, why, you know what I'm saying, he broke, and then there's a stigma on that. Guys who don't wanna be, you know, big and strong, there's a stigma, why are you in the, like there's so many people yeah. who are gonna look at you funny. Mm -hmm. So you're like, why wouldn't I wanna adopt? Even if you don't wanna be that person, you wanna be that person now, because you're like, I don't wanna be the ostracized one. Yeah. I think I think it's human nature though, yeah. uh, especially for men to, to want to be 
bigger, faster, stronger, bang moment, whatever it is, we're yeah. in a constant state of comparison. I think we've all, I think yeah. it's been like that, you know, yeah. for all time. <laughs> but with social media in our generation now, we yes. have comparison like at our fingertips, like yeah. eight hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. So we're always looking, oh, so-and-so's in the gym. Oh, so-and-so just bought a new car. Oh, so-and-so yeah. did this, yeah. that, and the third. Yeah. And then our self-worth kind of diminishes or we decide to put on a front and you know yeah. flex in front of this rented car or you know whatever yeah. Yeah. Um, to make ourselves look better on social media or whatever that might be. Exactly. So I think that just perpetuates mm -hmm. kind of like the ego and stereotypes and things like that. So can you attack the ego at the core is my question. Like how do, how do we, I, we know what the, the ego makes you do, but how do we eliminate that from the jump? And I, I think it starts with things like, like it starts with conversation and- Comes with- I, man, I, was, I, was lead, I was trying to lead into it. I was trying to lead into it. Come on, man. We on your channel. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Um, dang, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> it starts with conversation. It starts with, with conversation. Up, man. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> that was my oh, come on, guys. Uh, guys. Okay, so for example, like, talking about mental health. Mm. I think today, yeah. like, it's... I feel more comfortable talking about mental health. I see a lot of people that are more comfortable talking about mental health because people started stepping out in the forefront and saying, yeah. it's okay, yes. it's okay to cry, it's okay to see a therapist, it's okay yeah. to have issues, it's okay yeah. to acknowledge that you have anxiety, depression, this, that, and a third. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a lot more comfortable, it's a, it's a comfortable conversation now compared to what it used to be. Yeah. Um, and until people start talking about, hey, this isn't necessarily what a man is, or this isn't necessarily, you know, you know it's okay to like put your ego aside or whatever. Um, that's when that conversation will be a little bit easier and it'll be more of a norm. Yeah. I mean, we're going to go back to the, the generational conversation and you're talking about attacking the ego like at the core, then we have to change the way we're talking to our mentees, our what? Mm -hmm. That's your... No. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so, I'm just making sure. Like, just making sure. <laughs> but no, I'm saying like we just have to change that conversation when we're Correct. talking to them because, I mean, they're going to do what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I think that's how you really have to attack it. And like you said, you know, having those conversations that we're more open to having now because they're more, they're more socially acceptable. And understand that like a lot of our influence is linear. Like in terms yeah. of like, like B said on my channel um, in a branding video, go check that one out too. Um, we were talking about how like a lot of people feel like mentorship is hierarchical. It comes from this place of like this person who is up here, but in reality, this guys who Maybe your same age right. who yeah. need your, who yeah. need yeah. your representation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not just about like we're just talking to our youth. Yeah. It's guys who are our age, yeah. maybe yeah. even older, who need to hear these things, right? right? And to go back to what you said about conversation, I feel like I love conversation. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I think one has to become more intentional and has to result in action because yeah. we can talk about mental health all day, but how many of us are actually seeing a therapist? Exactly. Like, oh yeah, I need to go to therapy. You can, you can say that, but let's let's go. <laughs> like, right. let's... Until people are comfortable being vulnerable. Like for me, it took me a long time to be vulnerable. And if we're talking about like my brand, I always wanted everything to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was like staged in the right way. And everybody was like, dang, you know, he's killing it. He's doing this, that, and the third. And I was like, oh, y'all don't see that's what happens when they're vulnerable. Y'all like, <laughs> don't see everything that's going on. Yeah. And once I started becoming more vulnerable and saying, Hey, like I was, I was real anxious. I didn't post for a week because, like, I was struggling. My and I'm talking about branding, but my engagement one, like, people relate to that, and people yeah, feel more comfortable for talking sure. about it when people that they look up to can talk about it. Agreed. Um, so that's the first piece, and then the second piece is accountability as well. We spend so much time, like, in our heads thinking of like, this is how we should look, this is what we should do, yeah. and we we don't talk about it with other people because yeah, it's yeah. the male ego, right? Yeah. Um, why did you look dead at me when you said this today? <laughs> I just thought you I was laughing. I was having a conversation. You gave me an opiate. I was waiting for the key to drop the song. Those two things are difficult. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. even with me, like, I'm struggling with both. Like, yeah. vulnerable, no. Not happening. Um, <laughs> and, and accountability, I can keep my friends accountable, but in terms of keeping myself accountable is a, yeah. is a big deal yeah. for me, yeah. too, yeah. right? Where it's like, I think. But even still, I keep the things accountable that are easier for me. Mm -hmm. I can be accountable in the gym, it's easy for me to go to the gym. I enjoy that. Am I going to keep my mental health accountable? Yeah. 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 Like, Sometimes it takes another person to hold you accountable. So then, until now we're talking vulnerability, which ain't happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you kind of need one, you kind of can't have one or the other because it's like, it'd be vulnerable to say, yeah. hey, I'm struggling with XYZ, right? I need help with this, or I'm dealing with this. Right. But again, who doing that? So what? Yeah. yeah. No one wants to be judged. No one wants to be judged. judged. No you don't want to feel small. You don't want to feel weak. Yeah. You don't want to come off 
like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, even with certain friendships, let's talk about it, like with mm. making sure you have built a good circle of influence. Because yeah. sometimes yeah. you can let the wrong people in True. and get the wrong things back, See, right? Yeah. Sometimes you can let the wrong people in. Come talk on. about it. Talk about it. Get the wrong people in. Come on. Even in music, we're talking about day one. You always hear about day one, day one. Sometimes day one needs to be left in day one. <laughs> like, even in day one, yeah. like you know, but we get so lost in time. Yeah. Like I think we, like even unless you really change it. Like there are certain friendships you've made in the last year that you feel closer than friends yeah. you had yeah. four or five years. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. But you feel almost uncomfortable in it. Well, I've only known you for a year, but I, feel, I trust you more than I trust my three-year friendship over here. Is that okay? Yeah, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Please. Yes. Please. You know. And is it okay to like distance yourself from people who like are not doing, not servicing you well? Yes. yes. Like you know. And I, but a lot of times we're not taught that. We're talking like, I guess what's enough? Or you're, or you're changing. Yeah. You are. Like, like congrats. <laughs> <laughs> like, congrats. <laughs> oh, no. To your point about like having that that tight circle, yeah. you know. Me being in law school, I'm in high school by myself. And Come I'm on, like, law school. Law school, okay, bro. <laughs> but no, honestly, like, I'm and bringing the spiritual realm back into this, you know, God will make the the person that you didn't think you were supposed to tell, mm -hmm. the person that you were supposed to tell, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. It's like, I, I did not know that I needed to talk to you because I didn't look at you as that type of person to be able to say, I'm about to be completely vulnerable. Like, I'm taking the bail off. Here we go. I think that's his vulnerability for the spirit, right? Like, I think mm -hmm. that's another... If we're gonna stick on religion, like being vulnerable to what God's gonna do. Yeah. Like, cause honestly, when you decide that my plan is not gonna work anyway, and and go, <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh. and you allow His plan to reign supreme, like you really do see the benefits. Because I think a lot of times we can't submit to anything. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's tough to submit, especially as a man, because we're taught like mm -hmm. you know, which is why like, there's a stigma around men in church. Oh, men, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. 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 We talked about support, we talked about people around us, we talked about having the right people around us, but what does it look like when there's no one around or when we don't have that right support system around? Because yeah. there might be people out there that don't have that, mm -hmm. you know, or have that pushback from people. So are we doing the right things internally and every single day in our own lives to, you know, we talk about mental health, are we writing our own goals down? Are we keeping ourselves accountable in some form of fashion? I think it's actually, it has to be written, it has to be vocalized. And we love apps. And so at his conference again, his boy Sean, yeah. um, talk about an app called Headspace. And yeah, I have yeah, a, yeah. And it happens yeah, 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 that's so good because they hold you accountable. Yeah, because right? you know, and you're always on our phone. So, exactly. and and for me personally, two things that I always do every morning when I go and like, take a shower, put on to wash my face, whatever. Um, I look up and say thank you. I look forward to say I'm proud, mm -hmm. and that really helps mm -hmm. me in my day. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and like, like yeah, yeah, it really helps me. Like I just have to like, cause that starts me off. Cause I think sometimes we can get so lost on what we're not doing. We get to lost and we're not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Where you are? And, and to, to Pete's point earlier, like you know, all you see is the finished product. You yeah, don't see yeah. the behind the scenes a lot of times, yeah. right? So like, yeah, you're but you see the behind the scenes. That's, yeah, that's right. the big problem. You see it. You know it's there, right? What I always tell people is trust the journey, enjoy the process. Yeah. Yeah. Like everybody's timetables are different, and I know we started off talking about like ego and talking about like. What does a, a successful like male look like? Yep. And for me, it's talking about ourselves, because that's kind of what we transition to. It's what does success look like for you? Like when will you yeah. be happy? Like what are you passionate about? What does success look like for you? Writing that down and making, like doing what you gotta do to make that happen. Yeah. So if there was no social media, if there was no comparison, mm -hmm. what would you be doing for you to be happy? You yep. know? And like for me, everybody like, people ask me, not everybody, people ask me like, Dang, like you all you post a scripture every day on Instagram or during the gym every day, like what are you trying to do? For me to get where I'm going, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a pastor, I'm not yeah. trying to be a bodybuilder, right. but for me to be in the right headspace and, and, and right. mentally good, like those are two things that I gotta do every day. I gotta read the Bible, I gotta go to the gym. I'll be honest, I'll be I'll take this moment to be vulnerable and saying that I don't I'm not I'm not all the way there yet. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to like holding myself accountable, mm -hmm. being okay with it just being me. Yeah, like, I, like, yeah. I'll be honest, like, I'm, I'm, yeah. just, I'm not there yet. And so, you know, figuring out ways like using headspace or, you know, meditate, whatever the case may be, um, you know, talking to God, whatever, like, mm -hmm. you really have to figure out what that is for you. And I mean, it's not an easy process. Not at all. Not at all. So, not not at all. all. Yeah, yeah. And there's no time at all. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, be on the lookout for the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.
Convos with all.